Okay, in this slide we will talk a little bit about secondary uh, batteries. Uh, secondary batteries are very important because they can be recharged after they have been used. So in other words, after the battery has gone uh, flat. And uh, what we do after we fully discharge a secondary battery is that we can return the secondary battery to the original charge state by simply passing a current in the opposite direction to the charging current. So in practice, what we do is very simple. We just connect the negative terminal of an external uh, voltage source, and this could be in the form of a power supply, to the anode, the negative electrode of the secondary battery. And we also connect the positive terminal of the external voltage source to the cathode of the <coughs> secondary uh, battery. Uh, the secondary batteries are, are very useful because they are what we call energy, electrical energy storage or EES devices, electrical energy storage devices. And the older term for these devices is the accumulator. <coughs> so one very simple example, uh, we can see at the uh, bottom of the page here, are the uh, lead acid batteries, which we use in the motor car. And there are various other important examples, such as the sodium sulfur battery, the uh, nickel metal hydride battery, and the lithium ion battery, which will be discussed in a separate uh, tutorial uh, in, this, uh, in this series. The secondary batteries uh, have several characteristics. And you can see that uh, they basically have a good uh, power density. Their discharge curve is uh, relatively flat and they can also operate at uh, low temperatures. This little slide just shows us uh, why uh, secondary batteries are, are vital. Uh, the uh, lead acid uh, battery, which is a type of secondary battery, uh, provides all the onboard uh, power and also the power to start up the internal combustion engine in both the private uh, vehicle and in these uh, diesel-driven uh, trucks and lorries. In the remaining slides of this uh, tutorial, we will uh, introduce several important uh, characteristics of uh, any battery. The first one is called the open circuit uh, voltage. So by definition, this is the voltage across the cathode and the anode that is the uh, positive and negative terminals of the battery when it is not discharging uh, any uh, current. And in practice, we can measure the open circuit voltage, which is in volts, by simply using a, a voltmeter or a multimeter. And the important uh, point here is that the battery should not be discharging any current. No electrons should be coming out of the uh, anode when we uh, do this measurement. And the reason is shown by the uh, equivalent circuit at the bottom. Uh, basically, between the cell and the uh, external terminals of the uh, battery, there is a small but finite resistance called the internal resistance. So it's represented by the, uh, by the rectangular symbol in the circuit. And if any uh, discharge current goes through this internal resistance, 
then because of Ohm's law, there will be a voltage drop across the internal resistance, and this will reduce <coughs> the uh, open circuit voltage to a smaller uh, terminal voltage. So it's very important we use a high input impedance voltmeter to measure the open circuit voltage or the VOC and uh, this open circuit voltage is in fact determined by the so-called uh, free energy of reaction of those uh, electrochemical reactions inside the battery. Okay, the second uh, important characteristic of a battery is called the charge capacity. So because the battery is an EES device, we must find some way to describe the capacity, the amount of storage of the uh, battery involved. So one way to do that, and it's an indirect uh, indicator, is to use the amount of charge, positive or negative charge, which we can store within the battery when it is in the charged up condition. And uh, one way to do that is to use the term charge capacity. The way we measure the charge capacity is we simply discharge the battery, whether it be primary or secondary, at constant current. So by constant current, what we mean is the electrons are being discharged from the battery at a constant rate, a fixed number per second. So if we do that, all we have to do is we measure how long it takes for the battery to become fully discharged. So the VOC equals to zero, and we simply multiply the current in amperes by the amount of time, usually in hours, and we get this quantity called the charge capacity. And it's measured in the unit of amp hour. If you want to convert to coulombs, then you simply uh, multiply Ni by 3,600 because you have 3,600 seconds per hour. The charge capacity is also uh, known as the Coulomb, Coulombic capacity. The third characteristic of the battery is the energy capacity. And uh, this can be found easily by multiplying the charge capacity by the voltage across the terminals of the battery. So for example, if we multiply the charge capacity by the uh, open circuit voltage, we will know the energy capacity of the battery in the original state. In other words, before it's uh, used. The unit of the energy capacity is called a watt hour. And that is because if we multiply the current in the charge capacity by the voltage, we will get the uh, unit of power or the watt. So energy capacity is typically uh, measured in terms of the unit watt hour. Now, if we divide the energy capacity of a battery by the mass of the active electrode material, and this does not include the mass of the electrolyte or the casing, just the mass of the uh, electrodes, then we will get a quantity called the specific energy capacity. And it's measured in the unit of watt hour per kilogram. 
and this is an important battery parameter. Okay, round trip efficiency. So essentially for every energy storage device, and this includes not just the batteries, should have a high round trip efficiency. And uh, this term simply describes how well can you get back, how much can you get back in terms of energy from the energy that you store within the energy storage device. And the round trip efficiency is defined as the ratio, a number, number ratio of the energy recovered from the energy storage device and the energy which we originally store within that device. So usually the round trip efficiency is quoted as a percentage and is equals to the energy recovered divided by the energy input, the energy stored, and we multiply by a hundred to convert into a percentage. So a practical uh, energy storage device will never have a round trip efficiency which is 100% and that is because in the energy storage process there will always be some inevitable energy loss such as the heat loss within the current conductors of the uh, battery. Okay, the power of a battery. This is simply the rate at which energy can be supplied by the device to an external load. And uh, like we mentioned uh, before, uh, power is measured in uh, watts. If we divide the power of the battery by the mass of the active materials in the uh, battery, then we will obtain something similar to the specific energy, and that is called the specific power of the battery, and is measured in watts per uh, kilogram. And this quantity is also important because it's usually plotted uh, together with the uh, specific energy in the uh, Ragon plot. This is a very important uh, graph for uh, any electrical energy storage device. Uh, one limitation of uh, batteries is that the power of a battery is usually uh, not that high and that is because the electrochemical reactions taking place inside the electrode typically requires time. It takes time for the uh, electrode reactions to complete and also sometimes for the uh, ions to uh, move through the electrolyte. In fact, uh, power of a battery is not a quantity that is uh, easy to uh, calculate. Usually we need to carry out experiments to measure the uh, power.